Shall we begin? Shall we begin? House band doing always doing a great job for us. Well, thank you. Welcome to another edition of this week. I'm your host Sam Stichter. Well, folks, I can't believe that August is already here. Summer's just <laughs> flying by, and you know school school will soon be starting up, and well, at least online will be. <laughs> I know, I know. Parents are just thrilled that their kids are going to be staying home some more. Yay! <laughs> uh, and speaking of school, I know you probably heard in the news that Onyate High School is no more. They're going to be changing your name to Oregon Mountain High School. Uh, Las Cruces Public Schools, you know, they wanted to keep that name starting with an O. And some other choices that they had were, oh no, four more years of high school? And, Oh my God, LOL, hi? <laughs> well, what do you think about this election stuff going on? Elections will be here soon, November 3rd, huh? Well, it looks like our presidents, our, I'm sorry, our candidates for president will be Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And I understand that they have, they have hit the campaign trail. Keep moving. But I'm not sure about President Trump's new campaign pitch. It goes a little something like this. If you vote for me, you'll never have to vote for me again. <laughs> uh, oh, it's okay, okay, it's just all in fun. And then of course there's old Joe Biden and his new pitch goes something like this. Vote for me, for president, senator, anything. I have no idea what I'm running for. Again, just in fun. Well, let's see. What else is going on in the news? Well, I have to say, speaking of summertime, and we're running out of summer here, one thing that I've really missed is going to the movies, and I'm sure you have too, with all this COVID nonsense. But almost all the big blockbuster movies that should have came out, like Wonder Woman 1984, Black Widow, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and of course, Top Gun Maverick, have been scheduled for later this year, or even into 2021. Yeah, I know, it's, it's sad I miss it. Well, at least we still have some new content that's gonna be streaming on such services as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and you know, even right here on the Las Cruces channel, we have new content just like this show. So be sure to tune in. And speaking of movies, wow, we have an incredible guest here tonight. Special effects artist Sean Darling is here. And also, we have a great musical guest. Shane Stewart is in the house. So grab some popcorn and your favorite beverage, and we'll be right back with more this week. Woo, yeah, stay tuned. Hey there. You are watching the Sam Stickter Show. Some people call him Stickler, not me. <laughs> Anyways, keep watching because there's a lot more to come. Yes, on the Sam Stickler Show of this week. And we'll see you in just a moment. No, don't turn the tail. Don't turn it. No, 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 no.
Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in Southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. Let's get back to the show. All right, so you know Las Cruces, everyone recognizes my sidekick, Scotty, and he's been with me for several months. And Scotty, I don't want you to worry. I'm not replacing you with my buddy here. He's from the movie Stain, and actually he's a creation of my first guest tonight. Let's welcome to the show, Sean Darling. Uh, so Sean, welcome. So Sean is the um, owner of Griffin's Egg, one of the production studios here in Las Cruces. And it's a warehouse that does um, creatures like this. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, we make films, do special effects, visual effects, special effects makeup, prop building, just about everything. And people might be surprised that there's something like that here in Las Cruces. We were talking a little bit before the show about how now um, with the way uh, things are with technology and the industry in Hollywood, you can pretty much do this from anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you don't have to live in the middle of the drama or the <laughs> big city or anything like that. Um, yeah, just uh, just about anywhere. So, so how long have you been involved in special effects and, and production? I know you've done some acting, some directing, you've done it all. But um, Well, I got into it when I was 10, wow. but uh, obviously on a non-professional right. or non-professional <laughs> yeah, level. But um, yeah, it started, uh, I think I did my first film, did special effects makeup on my first film when I was about 17, uh, 16 or 17, uh, here in this town actually, um, and uh, wound up doing a bunch of stuff for theater and that kind of That's thing, awesome. and got into my own, uh, making my own films, stop motion stuff and all that with Super 8 film cameras wow. Wow. way back. So I know you mentioned that you're a Mayfield graduate. Yeah. So, and did you, um, when you, when you were at Mayfield, were you involved in anything in the arts or uh, anything like this? Yeah, I, I took a cinema class uh, for one, but uh, it was before they had all the cool stuff they have over there now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I did a lot of theater work actually then, and oh, good, uh, good. had a lot of people coming over from the college to watch some of the skits so you and were stuff. Working that I with put NMSU together. and and people uh, from there. Not working with them, but they would come over and they just would come watch over because and, what I was doing was a little beyond. Uh, what the what the norm was uh, oh, at the okay. time. So you were ahead people, of your time, so to speak. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> Dave Edwards' class was was wonderful. Okay, good. Yeah. So I, I know you've um, you mentioned that you've worked on a bunch of um, productions in in Hollywood mm -hmm. and um, some that we might know of. Can you can you mention some of the mainstream stuff that you worked on? Uh, sure. Yeah, I um, worked for Dean Jones of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine for a Big while. Big fan of Star Trek. Yeah, did a lot of uh, stuff uh, on the Paramount lot and. Uh, I've done stuff for uh, things like Preacher and a bunch of other, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you tell us about this guy here on your left? Oh, he's a little uh, <laughs> chupacabra puppet that uh, will be the head of a creature for a short film that we're about to do. Uh, we're doing the pre-production on right now called Roadkill. And oh, it's cool. For uh, written by uh, Joshua Lute Friedman, uh, does a lot of directing for a Sci-Fi Channel. And uh, it's going to be a part of a larger series of stuff that'll be online. And you said that's going to be filmed right here in Las Cruces, right? Your Absolutely. Studio? Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? You're going to be bringing some people in to do some screen tests, and you're going to be yeah, filming. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, one of the people's here today, <laughs> as well, but for a screen test. But uh, yeah, we're going to be. Uh, we've already done uh, some auditions for it. Um, the all the roles are filled except for one, and uh, yeah, it's all going to be shot down at our studio. Right. Um, lots of lots of effects, lots of um, it's a good story though. But uh, yeah, a lot of virtual environment stuff. It all takes place around a, a truck de uh, traveling down a desolate stretch of road, and um, they they run into a, a friendly little little guy named Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> And can you tell us about this fellow over here? I know you said he's, he's from a movie that we can see on Amazon Prime, correct? Yeah, he's from a, a short film, another one that I did called Time of the Turning, 
which was uh, done in a uni the universe of Sablewood, which is a bigger, uh, much bigger production uh, that has not been, um, had started filming yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's uh, named Jaron. He's a, like a wise man <laughs> oh, okay. uh, in, in the show. Look, a, he looks a little depressed. We're going mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. we're gonna have to cheer him up a he's bit. He's a little, little <laughs> saggy <laughs> these days. <laughs> so... But I know you. I know you mentioned that you've done fantasy, sci-fi, horror. Mm -hmm. what, what What do you enjoy the most? Um, probably the fantasy. Uh, I mean, the sci-fi is great. I do a lot of visual effects, so there's a lot of that involved. But the the fantasy. I mean, things with the the puppets and creatures right. is right. a lot more rewarding and does a lot for my for my soul. A lot and, more connected. And how to. long how long does it take you to, to make one of these creatures say this size since they all except for your big except for the big guy over there, these all seem to be about the same size. But how long does it take you to make one uh, of these? It really depends on like the design, you know, can take mm -hmm. uh, well, just any uh, particular amount of time. I mean it each one's different. It's it's different. Okay. So I mean something like this, uh, design wise was, you know, really a few days, but then the actual sculpture and running the the foam and everything for it and that uh, you know, four or five days probably to get it to uh, pull it out of the mold uh, at that point and cleaned up and then paint and hair and so forth. I mean, it can take anywhere from five days to three weeks to do something depending upon the level of detail and if there's mechanics involved for eye blinks and things like right. that. This guy will have digital eye blinks. So that, oh, cool. Yeah, very, we don't have to cool. actually build them into the head. And I know you. I know you heard you say that you've worked in Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal. I did not work oh, on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but you were. But you. But you know people who are involved with those movies. Oh, absolutely. Those productions. Yeah, That's probably, absolutely. Probably there's, where I'm getting. There's been from. a lot of uh, interaction amongst us uh, about some other things, especially at the moment. So. Okay, and uh, how about this guy here in front of us? Uh, this was from a, a film that I will not mention the name of <laughs> uh, from long ago. My first feature that, uh, well. If you do wind up finding it on your own, you'll see why I'm not just outwardly throwing the name out. But uh, <laughs> it wasn't a great film. One of your earlier <clears throat> productions, you were saying. Yeah, I was in. I was in charge of 300 people on that film, and I probably did 300 makeup applications on that film <laughs> wow. for zombies and stuff. That's, and it was, that's great. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, she was uh, one of the, the main cast. Uh, the main uh, cast members um, or characters' uh, mother, uh, who came back in the end and okay, well, cool. surprised everyone. <laughs> All right, and then um, so I know um, we we mentioned about um, Mayfield and your background here in the Las Cruces area. If there are younger kids out there who are interested in getting into this line of work, mm -hmm. what what kind of advice can you give them? Don't. <laughs> it's hell. No. Um, was, um, and it's it's interesting because there's a lot more competition now than there ever was. When I got into it, it was not a thing that most people were doing. Um, of course, there weren't materials readily available or anything like that either. So, and we did not have the internet. Um, but nowadays it's a lot easier to get into it. I mean, just don't follow all the YouTube video right. tutorials because a lot of them are wrong. They're great because everyone needs to create in their own way and find their own way of doing something. So sometimes there they're, they're are definitely happy accidents, but uh, yeah, find somebody who's done it before, who uh, can give you professional give advice. You, you, almost like a mentor. Exactly, right. get a hold of me is totally fine. Uh, I teach a, uh, classes out of oh, our okay, studio good. as well. and. Okay. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I was teaching filmmaking at NMSUA in Alamogordo before I moved here. Oh, awesome. So. All right, and I know uh, some of your films have aired right here in Las Cruces or have, have been, been uh, produced here in Las Cruces? Sure, some of them have. That is true. Okay. Well, we, we are, true. no, that's good. We, we always <laughs> want to make that Las Cruces connection, and we're, mm -hmm. we're glad to have people like you here in the area because, okay. like I said, I think a lot of people don't realize how great um, things, the great things we have here like this, true. you know. So um, when we come back after the break, you're going to be showing us some more of your creatures. All right, when we come back, we'll be here on the set with Sean Dorlin. He's going to be showing us some of his creations, and we'll see you after these messages. Attention Medicare customers with diabetes. Now you can stop the painful pricking of your fingers with a continuous glucose monitor. And they're covered by Medicare if you qualify. Call right now for free information.
as promised last Tuesday, we're back in the studio with Sean Darling. He's here with some of his creation. Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you brought today? Uh, like I said, it's a bunch of old stuff from uh, past productions. Um, this Who's guy, this guy here? Yeah. Yeah, this is a little, what we call the Enneber Priest from a uh, short film that the Jaren character was from, the big blue guy. Oh, okay. Uh, same, same guy. He's a little puppet. There were three of these guys carrying a box around throughout the whole thing. And... Uh, a couple of puppeteers uh, in great pain to make those happen. Uh, <laughs> and what else do we have? Uh, this is an old, old puppet. The oh, eyes wow. are even He's falling really, out of him. It looks like a like an older version of Alf. Right, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I never noticed that before. It was uh, from uh, another thing in the same in the same universe, actually, uh, that we did a little trailer for, a thing called Sablewood. Um, this is... Uh, a blown off head that uh, we used for um, oh. <laughs> that other, that zombie film I mentioned earlier that doesn't necessarily uh, have a name we're going to mention, but uh, I don't want anybody going and looking it up and judging okay. me for it. The but, movie uh, that should be unknown. <laughs> that, yes. The movie that, that shall not be named. That's it. <laughs> um, things from a, a children's show, Meek, the little mouse that was that on was your on desk. My desk uh, yeah. he's, this is also another one that he has not been finished being haired. But this is another puppet from that same children's show that oh, cool. uh, Very called, cool. called Undertown that will eventually, eventually be made. That uh, This was the uncle, the beginnings of the uncle puppet. Matter of fact, this was originally sculpted by Russ Adams of uh, the Jim Henson Creature Shop oh, Challenge awesome. show and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, is so, that going to be is that going to be a, a web series or is it going to be no? A that TV? was a TV series okay. actually. I was hired to be on season two of that, and then oh, they okay. they canceled the show not because I was <laughs> going to be on it. Uh, so, sure, but, no, just a coincidence, right, right. right? But it happened to <laughs> unfortunately shut down. But yeah, that that was a very cool show that he happened to be on. Uh, and, became friends with a lot of those guys. And speaking of shows, I know um, we were talking. You've done some some of the shows that you've done, like The Witching Hour, have actually uh -huh. premiered right here on the Las Cruces Channel, correct? Um, yeah, that, that's right. It was on the Las Cruces Channel. It was on the CW for for uh, all of the episodes. Oh wow, that's and great. And we've talked about bringing it back. It just depends on how all this current situation goes with everything. And uh, yeah. Have you found um, with like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu that there's a lot of work, more work now these days? Or um, I think uh, for somebody who does what I do the way I do it, there's a lot more work. Okay. Um, working small is becoming the the thing. Working, you know, uh, with a small crew and even small money, as long as you have the the correct equipment to do it with, and uh, obviously the knowledge. Yeah, right. there's there's a lot more to do. Um, and you can get it seen probably more than we we were seeing a lot of stuff before, given everybody's doing it online now. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what about this big guy up here in the front? Uh, this was from The Witching Hour, actually, oh, one cool. of the episodes. Oh. Uh, a, a rat that winds up talking to a guy. He's essentially hallucinating. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I think so, a rat that size. Yeah, well, he was actually a small, <laughs> okay. a small rat that we had to build big enough to puppeteer. A guy That's did right. the hands, and I did the head. And, yeah, it was a very... Uh, uh, interesting episode. Um, matter of fact, the guy who, who, who was the only, well, he wasn't the only guy, but he was the main guy in the thing. He was in a prison cell, in, in an Italian prison. Um, he lived with me for five days while we shot the oh, entire boy. episode, <laughs> isolated in this. Yeah, it was very interesting the way we had to do it. But so pretty cool. um, we're almost out of time here, yep. but just to mention, um, if some people here in the Las Cruces area want to work with you, mm -hmm. want to be mentored by you, anything mm -hmm. like that, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, Facebook is a great way. Just look up Sean Darling, S-H-A-W-N Darling, like it sounds. Because, okay. no. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, like I make it sound. No, and um, there or, uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably the best that's way. That's the best way. Yeah. All right. Well, Sean, thank you for being on the show. Thank and you. we'll be right back into these messages with our next guest, singer extraordinaire Shane Stewart's here. We'll see you in a few. Attention Medicare customers with diabetes. Now you can stop the painful pricking of your fingers with a continuous glucose monitor. And they're covered by Medicare if you qualify. Call right now for free information.
You know, I'm glad to have a place like this to come to. It's so hard to be unemployed, you know? Man, I've been sitting at home for a few weeks now, and it's like draining me bad, man. I hear you. I hear you. Good God, man, I'm missing all the, like, you know, the nightclubs, the, you know, the bars, and, you know, some of the bands. I'll drink to that. Bands. Drink to that, baby. You know what? Someday we're all going to be together again. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that. Hey man, I see, I hear you. Lights, camera, action. Wow, what a great audience we have tonight. All right. You know, Las Cruces, one of the great joys that I've had of doing this show is being able to introduce you to some great entertainment, musicians and singers from the area, and tonight is no exception. My next guest, please welcome Shane Stewart to the show. Welcome, Shane. All right. All right. Shane's All right. a musician here in Las Cruces, and he's been entertaining for how many years, Shane? Well, um... 
<laughs> going on 71 now. I've been doing it since I was about 11. So um, about 60 years. Wow. Yeah, I've been playing a long time. That's amazing. So uh, you said you started out at the young age of 11? Yeah, I did. I, uh, the first time I sang in public was, uh, was at a roller rink in Maryland. Wow. State of Maryland. And then you said as you got a little older, you started some garage bands, is yeah, that right? when I was 15, I started. I, for two or three years, I did that. And then when I was about 17, I started playing out in bars and stuff. And, and you told me a cute little story about how you got into the bars. Yeah, I used to have a little bit of fur on my face. So I'd take a little bit of mascara and put it on there. And I looked a lot older <laughs> that way. So I was able to get in the bar. But I was ready to turn 18 anyway. So I was only like six months away. But, but you, you know, had to cheat I a little need, bit. I needed that six months. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I remember doing that a little bit myself in the day. <laughs> but uh, so, but no, like I said, um, you basically I'm um, sang all over the country. What are some What are some of the famous places that you've sang at? Well, I have a group in New York. I played upstate. I was upstate New York. I played uh, Cornell University and the lawyer school parties. I played uh, uh, Great Gildersleeves in New York City, uh, CBGBs in New York City, Great Gildersleeves. Wow. Uh, I played the Copacabana in 72. Yeah, I remember the Copacabana. For yeah, sure. yeah. And uh, I uh, played uh, just lots of different places. I can't name them all. You said you know? Toad Creek was one of I them? I played Toads in New Haven, Toad. Connecticut. I'm sure a lot of people remember that if they went to Yale University, but they would definitely remember. But <laughs> yeah, we played there. I opened up with uh, Jerry Garcia and friends. Wow. And I, Jerry was a pretty good friend of mine. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And, uh, we were working on, uh, I was going on the road for an opening act, but uh, my bass player uh, got cancer yeah. and- uh, Let's go ahead and show one of, the, one of these pictures here of, of one of your bands here. Yeah, that's the band in New York. That's the, that's the one we were playing with uh, for Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead. Opening wow. up, I play, opened up for Journey to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Southside Johnny. Wow, it sounds like you've had an amazing career. Yeah, I, I've been, been lucky, been close. I played Vegas five different times. And then this other one here, this is a different band that you were with, That's right? when I packed up, that when I lost my bass player there, I couldn't replace him, so I packed up my stuff and moved to California and started that group there. You can see that the only one went with me is the, the lead player. Okay, the so guys you, had, are new. you had one of the guys had, go with you? Yeah, we all, no, the other guys didn't. Jerry had to leave and he, was, he died of cancer and the, the other guys were, uh, they, they couldn't leave their families and just pack up and go. So I did it. I just went out there anyway with me and my lead player and started another band. Right. And that's about how it all got started. And uh, today I'll be doing one of my songs that I wrote. I wrote, produced, and recorded it. Wow, that's, uh, that's with awesome. With my band, with the group I have there in New York. And uh, this song that I'm doing has been lost since 19... I recorded it in 1977. And then it got lost. It got wow. lost for, well, 30 years or so. Wow. And then I was able to find it again, it was set up in my garage, because I was, I was living in Florida. Nancy had, Nancy had moved out here from Florida, and I came, I was driving over the road at that point. Okay. So I moved out here with her, and then... Uh, so you moved here because of a woman, the same old story. Uh, ain't yeah. that the truth? Ain't that the truth? I'm actually a water guy. I like water around. <laughs> Never been much in the desert. <laughs> So, so you came here to Las Cruces and you've been performing here? We've played a few places out here. We played the country club, Sonoma Ranch over here. We played, uh, we did a party for uh, uh, Chris Solar and his family. Okay, our producer, and, yeah. And you know, we played the uh, Black Box Theater over here. Okay, uh, a couple know, places did here. Did the game, now. you know, we did different places, but basically I've been on the road for the last uh, 11 years. You know, I played all, I played in five states, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, and North Carolina. Wow, you've been a busy guy. Yeah, it keeps me going pretty good. Yeah. And I have to say, you remind me a little bit of somebody, somebody, a hunk, hunk of burning love. <laughs> yeah, either that or Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, too, right? I can but, do, I do Johnny Cash, too. You know. But you, but you've been requested to do Elvis a, a few times? Yeah, I might do one of those tonight because oh, that, uh, Elvis that would be is, awesome. uh, Elvis's anniversary of his passing is uh, the 17th of August, so. Wow, and what, you said that's been about 35 years? Well, actually, uh, 44 well, years. 44, so, something like that, 70, wow. I think 77. Okay, since, 19, since 1977, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, he passed. Yeah, so that's about 43 years, yeah. yeah. So that's been a long time, so. Wow, I can't believe it's been that but long. I, I remember I was a little kid, 10 years old, and I remember, I remember my mom crying, and I couldn't understand why, but now, of course, I do. Gosh, you don't look that young. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm all only kidding you. <laughs> no, I know. So, um, but yes, yeah, so I know you said you you write songs and you play the guitar and yeah. So what are some other songs that you've written? Uh, one called uh, uh, "Till I Win." Uh, my lady. Oh, good. And uh, the rest of them, I've got them on tape, but I just don't write off the hand know the names of all of them. No, you know? I, I, I would have. And I would have bought the. I, bought, I took the tape off a half track. It was done on a half track, but nobody has a half track today. It's, no, no. <laughs> they're extinct, you know. But I was able to take them over to uh, Emmett Brooks' studio. Okay. I don't really know what the address is, but I took it over there, the half track, after I found it, and he was able to take some of it off. Yes. And put it on CD. That's amazing that he was able to restore well, some. Well, I'm of just it. glad that I have it because if I do start another group, I, you know, I'll have this and they can get all the parts right off of it. You know, yeah, so and I'm going to I want to redo them and Yeah, I don't blame you. That's put them a, out, you know. That's a treasure to find after yeah, all this time. Yes, it is. And uh -huh. the, the music back then was far beyond anyone else's and uh, you know, this tape here is a little rowdy too, some of it, you know. Well, Shane, we are honored to have you here on the show tonight, and we're looking forward to hearing you sing some of your songs. So let's stay tuned after for, after these messages. We'll be right back with this week. Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in Southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. You know, Las Cruces, it's, it's been really hot out there. So if you're ever around our studios, feel free to stop by Dawn's Pub. You know, that's where all the stars from this show hang out. And speaking of stars, as I mentioned, we're lucky to have Shane Stewart in the house. So Shane, let's take it away.
Awesome. I love that song. I hope I can buy it somewhere. Hey, how about giving us another song? You know, Las Cruces, we've come to the end of yet another great show. I want to thank my guests tonight. We had FX master Sean Darling was here, and we also had our musician Shane Stewart was in the house singing some great songs. You know, folks, this is Sam Sticker reminding you, make this week your best week. See you soon. Thanks again.
Oh, y'all, thank you so much. Thank y'all.